Having in mind the board directions, we'll start with the horizontal board and its height variable. If we assign the height variable a fixed value, the height of the board changes, as previously explained, along the width of the bounding box. We may even assign it an exact value, so as the height of the board is equal to the width of the bounding box. But by doing so, if we change the width of the bounding box, the height of the board remains unchanged. The goal of this exercise is to bind the horizontal board to the adequate dimension of the bounding box. And as previously mentioned, I'll start with the height variable. First, I'll enter the height variable with the right mouse click, and within this interface we have the input window, where we can input not only fixed values but also other variables. Above the input window is the name of the selected board, the variable we entered, and its numerical value. Below the input window, from right to left, we have a list of basic mathematical operators, coordinates, dimensions, cancel and accept buttons, a help menu in a form of a question mark, and information about the current position and dimensions of the selected board. The variables in the middle are used to refer to a dimension of a board in a certain direction, but going into an in-depth explanation of how to use them at this point in a tutorial would just add an unnecessary layer of complexion that would just be confusing without any further context. So, to bind the height of the horizontal board to the width of the bounding box, we simply click width. By clicking width, we basically set that the height of the board is always equal to the width of the bounding box, no matter its value. Now, if I change the width of the bounding box, you can see that the height of the board is always equal to the width of the bounding box. Next, I'll bind the width of the board to the depth of the bounding box. First, I'll enter the width variable of the board, simply select depth from the list, and now the width of the board changes along with the depth of the bounding box. The thickness isn't made to be bound to the bounding box and can't be entered by right-clicking on its input window. Next, I'll bind the vertical sideboard to the bounding box, applying the same logic as beforehand. So, First I'll enter the height variable of the vertical sideboard and simply click height to bind the height of the board to the height of the bounding box. Next I'll bind the width of the board to the depth of the bounding box. For that I'll simply enter the width variable of the board and select that from the list. Now the height and width of the board change as I change the corresponding variables of the bounding box. Again, the thickness isn't meant to be bound to the bounding box. And finally, I'll bind the vertical front board to the bounding box. First, I'll enter the height variable of the board and simply click on height to bind the height of the board to the height of the bounding box. Next, I'll bind the width of the board to the width of the bounding box by simply entering the width variable of the board and selecting width from the list. Now the height and width of the board change as I change the corresponding dimensions of the bounding box. And once again, the thickness isn't meant to be bound to the bounding box. Thank you for listening and see you in the next tutorial.